This is Liberated Love Notes, a podcast on Living Corporate Network. I am your host, Brittany Janae, creator of Liberated Love Notes, critical self-reflections, and affirmations for the culture. Y'all, y'all already know if you if you've been here before, that Liberated Love Notes podcast is your source for weekly doses of reflections, affirmations, and reimagining for us by us. Y'all, I just, (laughs) I love to see, I love to see Black folks win. Like, it's a whole love language. I love to see Black bodies expand walk in purpose, be a light, do the damn thing. Like, (laughs) it just does something for my soul. You know, someone with whom I have the pleasure of being in community, have known for a few years now, is, is one of those Black bodies, another Black woman doing her thing in the in the wellness and in the wellness and, and fitness and industry. I want to share a story, reflection, uh, that we were just processing together that I think may be relatable or just resonate. Resonate. I mean it resonated with me. She was sharing Uh, She was sharing with me some of the the challenges that she's encountered as she's began to expand expand her business. And so as as I mentioned, she works within the wellness industry for the past five or maybe six years or so. She'd been growing under the leadership of a another wellness practitioner, uh, a black man, actually, a black man. She'd been growing under, growing with, uh, under the leadership of, of another black man within her industry. She shared, and I didn't even know this, that she began interning with him. She began interning and, and working with him a few years back, saw him as a, a mentor. Fast forward. A few years later, she's now been able to take all that she's learned, all that she has benefited from in that space, and create her own carve out space for her own her own business. She done opened up a whole like studio and all of the things. When I thought about it and as she was sharing her story, I'm like, you know, this is one of them success stories. When we think about it, when we think about the purpose of mentorship and and working with, growing with, growing under, to hear her share that now she was in a space and place where she could began to build her own, felt like a success story, a success story that I imagine her mentor and and colleague should experience, you know, tremendous gratitude around by being chosen, chosen to be a steward, a mentor. And experiencing in real time this seed, <laughs> the seed that, that that had been planted, that they had been part of, that he'd been part of, grow, sprout. Since uh, her expansion or some of the months leading up to her getting to this this goal or reaching this goal of opening her studio. She, she spoke of uh, how their relationship had suffered. One of the things that she experienced was 
her expansion and growth being less of a success story for him and and uh, more of, by her interpretation, an affront. Mm. Yeah, one of the things she spoke of was experiencing this dynamic where her expansion and her growth was perhaps interpreted as not a success or a win, but an affront to him. Rather than being excited for this growth, this evolution, this becoming, he was, by her interpretation, indifferent. Mm. Indifferent. Indifferent. I think it was Ellie Wiesel who said, the opposite of love is not hate. It is indifference. Which resonates because I love it when Bell Hooks, Bell Hooks, our ancestor, defines love as a commitment to one's own and another's spiritual growth. I love it even more when she refers to love as this combination of care, commitment, knowledge, responsibility, respect, and trust. <laughs> Y'all, she ain't say nothing about no indifference. What's that got to do with this story? When my girl shared her story, I could relate. Sometimes internalized scarcity mindset mixed with a little bit of internalized individualism, saturated with a little bit of dog-eat-dog -dog American culture, only one of us can win or have a seat at whatever table in whatever rooms that our ancestors probably don't even want us in, can have us compromising the light of those with whom we've been called to amplify and frankly, to love. Sometimes the noise and the stuff that we must come to unlearn can have us compromising the light of those with whom we've been called to love to amplify, to be called to amplify, to be called to love. <laughs> I imagine in order to be responsive to that purpose, to that beautiful call to stewardship, one must be grounded, one must be rooted, one must see themselves as human, as worthy, as enough, as, as loved. I believe those who have been called to the beautiful work of mentorship, of, in the corporate space, we sometimes use the language of sponsorship, as as leadership in, in order to be responsive to that call. I believe you must see your mentorship, your sponsorship, your leadership as a love practice. You must see those of whom you've been called to mentor, to sponsor, to lead as fully human, as fully worthy, as holy enough. When I say you must see them as fully human, you got to see them as human beyond what they can produce for you. You must see them as human beyond the ways in which their light benefits you. You must see them as human encompassing a range of experiences and identities and gifts and traumas and joys and pains and aspirations and fears. I just feel like when you think of it this way, 
you experience this call to amplify, to steward, to mentor, to sponsor, to love as something so deeply, so deeply spiritual. And that's, 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 that's high key. And I was about to say low key, y'all. That's high key political. Because we must not forget that the very function of colonialism and anti-blackness is to detach us from right relationship with what? The earth, our bodies, and the spirit. And so we disrupt that when we experience those of whom, with whom we are in community, in the fullness of who they are. We disrupt that when we experience those with whom we've been called to steward, to amplify, to mentor, to love as fully human. Black entrepreneurs and creators in the spirit of loving accountability. It's not liberation. I I just don't know. It, It ain't liberation. It ain't for the culture. If you're using the same principles of exploitation, white supremacist cultural norms and patterns and how you and how you do business, I just don't know. I ain't gonna speak from a place of authority, but I, I just don't know if that's liberation. I just don't know if it's for the culture, if we're using the same tools. Mm. It ain't liberation if we're prioritizing power hoarding over power sharing. I don't know if it's hidden liberation if we're creating or building or leading from a place of fear, scarcity, competition. Mm, I just, I just can't call it. I don't know if it's liberation, if we're using the same, same tools. Mm. Imagine this. And I had a conversation with my really good friend about this, this past week. And imagine if we saw our businesses as less of these like neo, you know, <laughs> sharecropping, uh, right? If if y'all have ever listened to uh, the 1619 podcast, you are very familiar with, and this was episode two, the ways in which business management principles and workplace uh, cultural norms originated in the plantation context. Episode two, 1619 podcast, y'all. Imagine if we saw our businesses as less of these neo share crop implantations and more of or more as incubators. Mm, incubators. Like we actually saw our businesses as incubators instead of adapting these predefined roles into this very (laughs) intentional capitalistic framework of hiring people to work solely for our benefit. We saw ourselves as incubators, Hmm. As, as gardeners, as, as stewards of future creators, builders, self-sufficient, collectivistic change makers. Mm. I don't know if that is possible. If our work, if our mentorship, if our leadership, if our sponsorship ain't rooted in love. I just, I just don't know. Are we rooted in love 
Am I rooted in love or indifference? Is my leadership, mentorship, sponsorship, how I am showing up as a change maker rooted in love or indifference? Y'all, I'm in with this poem. I guess it's a poem. I guess it's a poem. <laughs> I actually wrote it at the end of of last year. And so at the end of 2021, things will come to me. And I assume the spirit downloaded it for like a real reason and purpose, recognizing sometimes that purpose ain't immediate. I wrote this poem in my notes and I feel like it, it, it relates. I don't even feel like I know that it relates. And so I want to use this as an opportunity to share with y'all this piece that I wrote and I entitled it light. I entitled it light. We're going to end the episode light. My brothers, my sisters, my siblings' expansion is not a loss for me. My brothers, my sisters, my siblings' expansion is not a loss for me. They say it can only be one of us, to which I respond, that's a lie. They say it ain't room for us all at the top, at the table, in the room, to which I respond, that's a lie, (laughs) and we don't want to be there anyway. They say I should be intimidated by their light, to which I respond, that's a lie, I am drawn to it. Their light is contagious. Their light is warm and inspiring. Their light feels like permission that perhaps I ain't need but benefited from having, from feeling, from seeing, from being nourished by their light. My brothers, my sisters, my siblings' light is not an affront nor a loss. It is a win for us all. It is a win for us all. (laughs) I believe that. I believe it. Ooh, down in my bones, in my soul believe it and I believe we deserve I believe we deserve I catch y'all next week peace